I want to talk about the future. I want to talk about what we do and how we do it and where we do it and why it's different and why it's changed and then ultimately what you can do about it. 25% of us in the room are in that more visionary, entrepreneurial, forward-thinking mode. And we need to shift that, if you like, in terms of our thinking, our attitude, our behavior, to make all of this happen, because it's us that make the difference. We are seeing a massive change in where we are in the world and where the economy is and how we perform and how we operate and what culture we live in. And that is changing so much of the way things work. Technology is completely changing what we do and how we do it. And that's the important thing about where we're at in our industries at any moment in time. We need to look at what technology would truly do to our business. We will have access to vast amounts of new data and we have no idea how we'll use it yet. And that's really quite cool. It's all about innovation, doing things differently for some advantage that you're seeking, whatever that happens to be. And the second one is being more productive. The West needs to become more productive to compete with low cost economies and emerging markets. And therefore tools and technology are one of the ways that we've always done it and we always will do it for the foreseeable future. The lovely thing about change in the working environment is that whilst many people will find the jobs that they plan to pursue may disappear, there's lots of new jobs being created. And one aspect of that is many more people working from home or at least working remotely. So one in three in the next 20 years or less will be working from home. And of course that means the new colleagues that are, if you like, sustainable colleagues are those people around us wherever we live. We are not short of people. They are all over the place and they are changing the way they do things in their countries. And that's going to have a huge impact because we're not at the top of that curve yet. We're only two thirds of the way up. The consequence of more people in more places with more money means we need more infrastructure if we do things the way we always have. If we look at Europe, our average age is 43. We're getting ready for a midlife crisis. In India, the average age is 25. They're just going to work. Who's got more energy, Europe or India? Aging is something we've all heard about, we all get, but broadly speaking today, around about 10% of the world's population is over 60. But if you go forward to 2050 or thereabouts, we're going to be 20%. So we go from 700 million to 2 billion. And our attitude and behavior changes as we get older towards the things that we acquire, buy, use. And that is massively transforming many, many industries around the world. The future is very much about um, more devices coming online, connecting more people in more ways than never imagined they could possibly do uh, from the past. So we will we'll massively uh, become more connected. So we have the Internet of Things, which talks about a few trillion devices. This is where tens and groups of tens of trillions of devices are out there, sending information, acting on our behalf, fixing our bodies, fixing our machines working in amazing ways. We're talking about aircraft with uh, uh, a nano sensor every square centimeter over every surface, telling us the condition of that uh, material. And the same thing in our bodies. Artificial intelligence, cognitive computing, machine learning, call it what you will, different forms are gonna increasingly change what we do and how we do it. Augmented reality is happening for real everywhere. So we're beginning to see things that we need to interact with in some fashion or another are appearing on our devices all over the place. And that could be holographic, it could be on flat screens. In, a, in any way, it's looking 3D and it's changing our perception of those devices. And ultimately, we end up with virtual reality where we can engage with things on a serious basis. With devices that can tuck into our ear, it's very discreet and you can get access to anything. That can be your telephone if you like to use that old language. It can be your music listening device. So it's your communicator, but also, you can have heads up display on your lens, watching a concert, even being there, feeling you're part of it while you're sitting doing something else. Or going to a football match, you know, maybe I want to stand in the goal mouth where the goalkeeper is with exactly the sight line as he's standing to, waiting for a penalty to be kicked. I'm dead cool. Boeing are talking about completely 3D printed aircraft and so are Airbus. The tail fins of Boeing's are all going to be 3D fabricated on the spot when needed, so just in time, rather than actually have them stored in different places and always in the wrong place. And we can even print our own meat and eat that as food or print a heart. So 3D printing fabrication is not just a replacement, it's better often than mass manufacturing. Eventually we might say, I don't want my own vehicle. 80% of the time it sits in the driveway or in a car park doing nothing anyway. Why don't I just call up whatever I need to use when I use it? And that will become the, the norm. And the sharing economy is one of the fastest growing economies 
that the world's ever seen. Then, of course, you've got the Hyperloop, which is now in design for California, and they fly along on a, on a bed of air, and they do about 700 miles an hour. And in the States, they're looking for a time in the future where house prices are not any longer driven by locality. If you can go from uh, New York to Philadelphia in 10 minutes, why don't you buy a house in Philadelphia? The screens will disappear because we haven't got enough indium in the world that we make them out of. So increasingly, we'll have um, virtualized holograms who will interact with us in a very human way. And all technology that is a more human-like engagement is successful. Loads of kids are going to school now, wherever they are. And when they come out, they'll be doing jobs that don't exist. So you're going to have people like body part makers using 3D printers in all sorts of materials, creating new body parts for people. Go forward about six or seven years with micro 3D printing, and you end up with organs being able to be produced that are made of the same biomass as the individual. Blockchain, OK, irrefutable ledger. It's out there. We can all do things differently. And increasingly, of course, we are going to. Every bank, every insurance company, every claim organization, every firm, every real estate firm, are going to increasingly use these tools to make what they offer more reliable, cheaper, quicker, with more, more predictability than ever before. And we can do payments in new ways with third parties we thought we'd never deal with. We can do smart contracts that we know who's been editing what we're offering and what state it's at at any moment in time. And we can exchange properties in a heartbeat because we have the history of the ownership of that property and its condition. All of those things are things of the future and they are beginning to come real. Don't think about the future beyond the next year or two and to think where we should be in five years time and if we've got to join the real world and if it's going to be that quick I need to devote a lot more time to that. We focus an awful lot on short-termism and one of the things I try to do because I'm a coach and a mentor is try and get people to think about what the future actually might look for them and to do some envisioning so this was really good stuff for me. You can see those things coming what he talks about and um, I think it's very important to have those kind of events to make people aware on a constant basis that you have to adapt to changes really quickly. It's a good thing to look at you know, the future and take what the, the, what the outcomes are of that and implement it really. So yeah, we're really useful event. So telling you what's coming isn't actually the issue. The issue is what can we do with the things that are already in front of us or the things we already recognise? Because often we don't recognise them for what they truly are. It's the confluence of different things happening that really allow us to live differently, behave differently and do things differently. So there's social change that impacts it and technological change and then we'll live differently, we'll behave differently, we'll consume differently and the world will have changed. This revolution we're currently going through is around 3,000 times faster or 3,000 times the impact than the last industrial revolution. So there is a lot of change. It is going to transform what we do. And we've got to come to terms with how to deal with that. So first we do things differently, then the whole framework of what we're about changes. And ultimately, we do different things. And if we can see that coming, if we can see the difference between the one and the other, then we've got a fighting chance of being successful in this next era. I want to leave you with a sense that there is a great deal changing, not that there is necessarily doom and gloom, but there is a great deal of change. There's this huge opportunity if we plan for it. So the future belongs to those who prepare for it today.